Good morning. We'll uh, get set up, give people a chance to get in and uh, plug down. Hope you're all well today if you're hearing this at this point. today is uh, walking in the Lord and uh, walking with the Lord and so uh, uh, that was uh, uh, my, my rendition at least of Jesus walked this lonesome valley as we uh, get ready to head into worship I, I do want to uh, kind of keep you uh, posted on some of the things that are happening and uh, uh, we'll uh, lift up folks that can use prayer a little later just before we pray but um, one thing I wanted to uh, make sure you're aware of uh, is that we will be doing the live streaming uh, on Facebook on the churches so we go United Methodist Church Facebook page which is where you're at right now if you're here at about 10 30 um, and we'll be doing that from the sanctuary during mm -hmm. Advent now the first Sunday of Advent comes at the last Sunday of November but uh, as of today we have two more Sundays coming in November so uh, next week it will the service will take place here in uh, our living room as as it has been for some time here uh, and then we'll be uh, headed over to the church for the Sundays of Advent. Uh, we felt like that would be a good thing to do to kind of give people a chance to see uh, the church as the COVID cases continue to mount in our area and uh, really nationally. Uh, I, I don't see us being able to get together again safely for some time. But we're going to continue to do this and we are going to continue to join together in worship uh, whether it's on Facebook or in the church so uh, that's our plan uh, the the other thing is that next week in particular we are going to be lifting up people who are uh, it's this yeah let me start that all over again the month of November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month and so next week uh, we're gonna kind of focus on that in our worship time and so if there is someone that you would like to lift up in particular who is suffering from Alzheimer's uh, then we would invite you to uh, note that send a private message with that name and uh, we will make sure that it's in the list uh, as we send out the bulletins next week I intend to have a list uh, it's also a time in which you recognize those people who are serving as caretakers in the lives quite often of family members and so I would appreciate uh, those and if you could kind of differentiate between the two that would be really helpful so that we can uh, give the congregation a list of people for whom they can pray and uh, 
uh, and that would really be wonderful. Uh, another announcement, uh, we have got a small cupboard sitting on the porch at the Wesley House, and uh, uh, Lydia uh, Corcoran was interested in getting something set up uh, to provide food. And so what we're going to be doing is encouraging you, um, and at this point, because we're coming into cold weather, uh, a lot of canned goods are not going to be good, but um, dry goods would be. Uh, and to help support an outreach to folks in the community who need food. Uh, and I am sure there are plenty. And so um, we have been supporting a, uh, a food cupboard of a very similar sort uh, at, uh, at another spot over at Bobby Harris's uh, church. Uh, the uh, men's group has done that. But um, because of the uh, uh, situation at the church and the doors being locked uh, for a large percentage of the time, we felt like this would be a great idea. It was Lydia's idea and uh, the board agreed. We thought it was a wonderful idea. And so if you would like to supply some things there, that would be wonderful. And uh, they'll be available as they're available. And people can stop and check it out. And uh, if there's something that they can utilize, they, uh, they will be able to do that. Um, so those are some of the things. Uh, my intention is to be in the church um, mornings uh, and uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And uh, I would be in, in uh, my office there during those time frames from about 9 to noon. So um, one thing that will be happening is I will be doing the devotions from there. And so there might be a time frame when you would call and I would not be available. Um, so, uh, but I will, I will get right on and, and uh, call back if you leave a message. So that's, uh, we're trying to increase contact with folks and availability. So keep that in mind as well. This week may be a little strange. Uh, both of our daughters, Lindsay and Alyssa, are moving uh, by the end of the month. And so um, it, has, it, it has altered things dramatically, especially uh, since Lindsay has had to have her uh, brakes fixed in her car, and we're not entirely sure exactly what's going to happen. So I may not be there this Tuesday, just to give you warning. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure. It all depends on whether or not Lindsay's car is done on Monday. And uh, so... Uh, Anyway, but after that, my intention is to try to be in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings at the church, uh, where uh, you can contact me by phone there at the church. All right, uh, having said all that, then I would invite you to join with me in worship, and uh, we're going to uh, bring the light of Christ Actually, Christ already brought us light, and we're just going to remind you of it in the lighting of the candles. And I would invite you to join with me in the opening unison prayer. Oh God, the King Eternal, you who divide the day from the darkness and turn the shadow of death into the morning, drive far off from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night comes, Rejoice to give, to give you thanks, thanks through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is number 580 in your hymnal if you have a hymnal. Otherwise, you'll be using the words that I typed up on the uh, bulletin. If you are not getting the bulletin, please let me know uh, and send me your email address. Uh, it has been very difficult to keep all the email addresses on the listing for some reason, and that may just be Jamie, but please do not give up if, uh, if you're having trouble. 
let me know and we will try to get you on again. <laughs> So that often is a focus of our, our prayer life. I do want to lift up some uh, prayer concerns. I've already mentioned the girls moving, and uh, they have both found apartments in the last week, and that has been uh, a wonderful thing. We're really excited. And uh, so if you would continue to lift them up in prayer as they move and settle in to their uh, new apartments. Also, I we'll have a number of other folks that we want to lift up. Um, Jeff and Bev Dimmick's grandson, Thomas, is going to be headed for the National Guard soon, so uh, we would appreciate prayers for him, and certainly for Bev as she continues to recover from surgery. For Joan Fisher uh, and for Bill Jones, uh, Bill is, uh, has been suffering from shingles, and with all of the other issues that he's gone through, it, it just really complicates life dramatically. So for Bill and for Dee Dee as well. Certainly want to keep in mind the family of Audrey Oliver, uh, and uh, I believe her, she had a service her family um, uh, set up uh, over in uh, Waverly, I believe, uh, this last Saturday, yesterday. Uh, as for continued prayers for John Wickland, John is doing well, and we are thankful for that. Um, I would appreciate prayers, especially for my hearing. I've had hearing problems ever since... Uh, the end of August, and uh, my left ear has been plugged up for a couple weeks. Uh, been to the doctor over it. I'm going to an ear, nose, throat doctor, but I can't get in until uh, into December a little ways. So uh, right now my hearing is very limited, and so I would appreciate prayers for that. Also have a couple of unnamed prayer concerns. And uh, as always, I would invite you to make sure if you have some prayer concerns that you would like lifted up, that you get them to me, and uh, we will make sure that we do that. So I would invite you now to join with me as we engage our hearts and minds with the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. 
Lord, as we come before you this morning, we are thankful for this day. Lord, we look ahead to Thanksgiving. It's a little over a week away, about a week and a half. And uh, if there was ever a year when we might be less thankful than other years, this would be it. And yet, the truth of the matter is, as we look at the uh, those who uh, originated the concept of Thanksgiving, uh, were in far more perilous shape than we, even with COVID, even with the issues in the election, even with the differences that we see between one another, they were facing starvation and disease and all kinds of issues. And yet, in all of that, they recognized that they had reason to give you thanks. And they truly did celebrate and give thanks to you. And Lord, we want to be there by the time we get to Thanksgiving. And and so uh, I jumped a week ahead with the, with full intention. I, I want, Lord, for you to speak your peace and thanksgiving and joy into our hearts in this difficult time. And I ask for it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we do lift up those that we have named who are going through such difficult physical issues and uh, others who are going through emotional issues and, uh, and so many things that are just going on. The anger is kind of building again, and uh, Lord, we, we want that dissipated. We want your love to fill us, fill our hearts, and to work in us and work through us into your world. That is where we need to be, and that's where we want to be, Lord. So keep us from anger. Keep us from pride and arrogance. Keep us from uh, thinking so highly of ourselves that we uh, forget to listen to you. And we ask that we would pay attention to your word, and we are thankful for the Bible and all that it has to say to us of you. Lord, we do pray for our church. These are difficult days, days when it is not safe to be together uh, with the COVID issue. And um, Lord, we don't want to flaunt our uh, ourselves in, in this, but we, we suffer greatly at not being able to be together. But we trust that you are God and that you will see us through this time, that you will join our spirits even in our time of separation, that you will encourage our souls and that you will bless us indeed as you have promised to bless us. And so, Lord, we, uh, we ask you to help us to follow you, to walk with you, to walk in the way that you walk and where you lead us. And uh, as we come this week to the time in which we are seeking to have people send in their pledges for the coming year, for 2021, we ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts and give us wisdom as to what it is that we should be doing uh, in following your way in our tithes and our gifts and our offerings to you. Help us, Lord, to perceive it that way. We are giving to you. We are not giving to uh, support a building. We're not giving to support a pastor. We're not giving to support any individual. We are giving to you. That's what our gifts are doing. Then they're used for many purposes. But, Lord, uh, our giving is between us and you. You are the one that we are making an offering to. So, Lord, I ask you to really speak that into truth within our hearts and minds so that we may fully and, uh, and lovingly and joyfully support the work you've called us to and, uh, and support your work, Lord, not our own. So, as your people, claiming your leadership, we come before you and we say that prayer which our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father... Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if the boys and girls want to uh, sort of gather around or pay a little more attention at this point, um, we're going to have our children's message. And uh, today we're going to be reading, boys and girls, from the Psalms. And uh, the Psalms were poet, poems that were written, a lot of them, most of them were written by uh, the person that we know as King David. And uh, some were written by other people, but the Psalm we're going to read today is 128th Psalm. And in it, the Psalmist refers to you guys, boys and girls, as olive shoots. And uh, so I thought, you know what, uh, you're a little olive shoot. And I don't have an olive tree, I don't have an olive bush or whatever, but I do have some bamboo here. And uh, if you can see it well, and perhaps Mrs. Stevens will hand me the telephone so I can kind of give a closer look. Oh, okay. Hang on, I'm trying not to make you sick. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now, boys and girls, this is a bamboo. Uh, and, and if you see this piece uh, right, <laughs> this is really hard, <laughs> right here, okay? That's a bamboo uh, sort of tree. This part right here, that's a bamboo shoot. And if you look at this one, if I can get it down there, right? Let's see. There we go. That is a bamboo shoot right there. And this is the bamboo uh, tree, if you will. And so as you, as you look at those, you see that the shoots come out of the side of the tree. And that's how shoots work. And so olive shoots, I'm going to give this back to Mrs. Stevens. Close your eyes for a minute so you don't get sick. Uh, olive shoots are they spring out from the uh, from the tree and yeah that's good that's good I'm gonna push it there, there we go I guess we have both in there now <laughs> anyway uh, they spring out from the tree and that's how things like that grow sometimes uh, shoots grow up out of the ground out of a roots from another uh, from a tree. But they, uh, they're all part of one thing. And, uh, and so when, uh, actually, if you could push the bottom in so it's like right Oh, up. so your chin. There we go. That's, yeah. I don't know if that's better, but that's. Well, uh, now you're not yeah, peering with yeah, your I'm chin not, on yeah, the yeah. edge. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, boys and girls. Anyhow, um, you know, we, uh, we grow from. Our families and uh, and you know we have families moms and dads and and one of the things that we rejoice in is that Thanksgiving we get together with our families and we eat a big meal together and uh, we're in that time of year when we're thinking about Thanksgiving and we want to thank God for giving us families we want to thank God for other things that are there and uh, and you are like uh, the Bible says, like little olive shoots growing all around, and uh, and and when the olive shoots are growing, it it's a it's a sign of health and well uh, wellness. And uh, and though we're not meeting in the church, you know, when we have boys and girls in the church, we have boys and girls watching the uh, the video and sharing together. You are a sign of health in the church and everybody is so glad that you are there you are important you are very important in the life of the church and you are very very important in God's eyes and so I, I want you to know that I want you to think about that and I want you to be happy about that God looks at you and he is happy that you are there all right let's pray together Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. For olive shoots. For olive shoots. Especially. Especially. Children. Children. Olive shoots. Olive shoots. And we ask you. 
And we ask you to bless each one. To bless each one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, boys and girls. I appreciate it. Now, uh, and tell me, I didn't bring my Bible with me. I cannot believe it. I can it. tell you that. All right. I don't um, see, is it out there? I'll go and get it. Yeah, it's out in front of the computer, I guess. I had it set aside. I thought I brought it in with this, but I did not. Well, I'll get it soon. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. But you can turn, if you have your Bible, you can turn to uh, Psalm 128. I suppose I probably could find it in the back of the hymnal because most of our... Uh, most of the Psalms are there, and that one is not, so I do need, I definitely need my Bible. I'd prefer it anyway. I don't know what, maybe uh, she's having trouble finding it. Oh, there I we go. I did have to look a little bit. Okay, well, this is black, so it kind of looked like it was in the shadows, perhaps. All right, so we're going to turn to... Psalm 128. Hear the words of the psalmist. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the one who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Well, like I said, I really felt like I wanted to uh, sort of do a... a pre-thought process for Thanksgiving because I don't remember another year in my life when Thanksgiving seemed so very far from the forefront of thoughts. And uh, as Christians, we really ought to be celebrating Thanksgiving on a regular basis, not just at the end of uh, November. But this... Uh, this passage uh, calls us to, really, to a reason for giving thanks. And uh, as we look at the beginning, it sort of sets us up. It says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. And the truth is that walking, or traveling, or journeying, or wandering, those terms and others very much like them, are terms that we use to describe our lives as we move ahead, growing in Christ and anticipating the eternal life that is to come and within which, in a very real sense, we live even now. Now, if we go to the uh, book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah reminds us, relative to this walking and, and traveling, journeying, wandering, he reminds us that even youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's from Isaiah 40 in uh, verses 30 to 31. And then if you go back to the beginning of this chapter, you'll see the intent of God. That is the uh, chapter uh, in Isaiah chapter 40. He begins this by saying to Isaiah, in reference to what he's going to say, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Now, um, that was the first place my mind went when I was focusing on this concept of walking in obedience to the Lord, was this passage from Isaiah. And uh, as I turned to it, uh, the first thing that caught my eye was the very beginning of that comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. And uh, we are in need, really desperately in need of comfort. And, and so uh, I think those two passages go together, and, and you really
really are in, intimately interlinked. So as we consider walking in obedience to the Lord, as we're encouraged in Psalm 128 to do, and we consider the nature of walking, which is lifted up for us in Isaiah chapter 40, there is a wonderful message. And, uh, and so as we look at Isaiah, we, uh, we see the bad news that the walk is exhausting. Because the even youths shall faint and be weary. At the very least, you're going to be weary. The reality is there's times when it's going to be so distressing that it could cause you to pass out. And, and again, when we look at these things, you want to think in terms of the physical, to be sure, but you also want to think in terms of the spiritual. Bad news is the walk is exhausting. Even you shall faint and be weary. Young men and women at the peak of their strength and prowess are going to get tired, physically beat, right? So tired, in fact, that they will certainly stumble and fall and may even faint from fatigue. Have you ever experienced fatigue like that? Maybe it was the third time up uh, on a given night with a new baby uh, after five or six nights in a row of being up five or six times a night um, leading up to this one. You're exhausted. You're barely able to open your eyes. Or it might be an emergency at work, like a lineman for a power company uh, responding to the catastrophic effects of a hurricane where there are hundreds of thousands of people in need getting electricity out to them again on day 21 of a two-week commitment, if you catch my drift there. It might simply be the exhaustion that comes from dealing with a sickness or a disease, your own or someone else's. It might be a, a, a sense of exhaustion that comes from the loss through death of a loved one. New responsibilities that are suddenly thrust upon you in life and you don't have a clue how to handle them. It might be emotional distress from the loss of a job, financial stress, family problems, and on and on. Exhaustion, physical exhaustion, can come upon you and destroy levels of life, joy, energy, and thanksgiving. And of course, it isn't just the physical, as I said before, either is it? It's the spiritual, and truthfully, the exhaustion that comes with that area of our lives is perhaps the most demanding of all. The psalm makes it sound so easy, doesn't it? Blessed are those who walk, who fear the Lord. It's a simple concept. Blessed are those who walk in obedience to him. Simple concept, maybe a little harder to uh, attain, but the promise is so encouraging. You'll eat the fruit of your labor. Prosperity and blessings will accompany you. Family life will be great. Let me say it again. This is the blessing for the one who fears the Lord. It's a wonderful psalm, and, uh, and it, it is very encouraging. But uh, the fact is that we all know that life, as we experience it, is still going to be a journey. It is a long and arduous walk. It is exhausting. And the walk ends in, uh, well, not to put too fine a point on it, but death. And yet the word of the blessing in Psalm 128 is so clear and the promise is so wonderful. It is so encouraging. We do know, however, again, that there are going to be times of discouragement and exhaustion, of stumbling and fainting. How do we make peace between these two things? If we've ever been at the point of exhaustion, the point of fainting, the point of frustration and misery in our lives before now, I'm sure we recognize that we're going through it again in this time. And we can all relate. A bitter, brutal, and horrifically polarizing election has taken place and still is taking place with no real resolution in sight. I mean, we know there's going to come a time, but uh, at this point, things are still very much up in the air and there is, uh, a, even if possible, a growing polarization in that. 
We're in the midst of a pandemic, which is unlike anything anybody from this generation has ever experienced before. And while it doesn't seem as deadly as the Black Plague, or perhaps the Sp Spanish Influenza, two highlights of human existence and destruction, it's pretty bad indeed. My, my grandparents all went through the Spanish Influenza. My grandfather uh, was at a marine base, and uh, it was during World War I, and he was one of two guys in his company that survived the war. And they never got overseas, any of them. Uh, the rest all died as a result of the Spanish flu. Uh, but what we're going through now is pretty bad indeed. Part of it is the fact that we still haven't figured it out yet. If only for the restrictions and demands that it has placed on us financially and psychologically, it is still a horrifically difficult time. But of course, it isn't just that. It's not just the uh, restrictions and demands. I think that many of us, perhaps most of us, have known someone, somehow, that has a connection with our own lives that has died from COVID. And for those of us with physical issues that make us all the more susceptible, it brings a fear, and a very reasonable fear, of death. So as we stand here in the month of November, closing in on the brink of Thanksgiving 2020, now being told we can't have all of our olive shoots around the table with us come a week from this Thursday, how in the insanity of the antithesis of a blessing do we find our way into thankfulness? How do we praise God in a manner commensurate with a call in our lives as Christians? How do we say thank you when we really want to say, what in the world are you thinking? I could say something simple like, look, even as bad as it is, we're way better off than nine-tenths of the world, so get a grip and a stiff upper lip. You'd come back next Sunday for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think what we really have to look at is the way these passages, these two scripture passages work. Consider where the encouragement actually comes from and reapproach the runway in order to land on Thanksgiving safe and sound this year. First of all, who actually owns it all? As long as we focus on ourselves, we are in trouble. Our blessings come out of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The first step, then, is to focus on that relationship. Note the two qualifiers in Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. Then, so we have that fear of the Lord and obedience in our journey with him. And then in Isaiah, consider the result of waiting on the Lord. Sometimes we'll fly effortlessly like eagles. I personally like that one. Sometimes we'll run and not be weary. There's a lot more personal energy being expended there. Uh, you have to run, but you'll be able to do it. Then there are times, and we're in them, when we will be able to walk without fainting, although that might be as good as it gets. Exhausted? Probably so. Fainting from exhaustion? No. Flying effortlessly? Nope. Running? Not so much. But walking without fainting? Yeah, that, that we can do with God's help. Can you find the blessings of God in the walk? Well, yeah, but I'd rather fly or at least ride in the car. Well, walking may be as good as it gets, and you better believe that even that is a gift from God who said... At the beginning, if you remember, of Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort my people. And then he goes on and, uh, and says, well, things are going to be tough at times. The truth is, the call on our lives is the same. The truth is that the promise that God makes of blessing is the same. No matter what the circumstances, but we have to walk. We have to walk with the Lord in obedience. God will not just be walking with you, but blessing you in his love and presence in the midst 
of all of it. God will show you the blessing you're receiving in the midst of the horror of whatever day you are facing. And as Paul puts it, having done all to stand. You notice there, you're just standing, you're not even moving. Sometimes that's all we can do is stand. When our focus is on God and our relationship with Jesus, we no longer even have to define the blessing. And this is where I think it really gets uh, significant. We try to define blessings. This is a blessing, that's a curse. This is good, that isn't. This is, you know, uh, in terms of our journey. And, uh, and so if we go through something difficult, we tend to think, why, why has God left me? Or why is God not doing what he said he would do? We try to define the blessing. And, and the issue there, folks, is that the, defining the blessing is up to God. And blessings, it, it will be very much in the here and now, as well as in eternity. But some of those things are going to happen in the eyes of God, and we have to simply receive them and keep on walking. We don't have to recognize them as such. We don't, you know, it's not up to us to define the blessing. That's up to God. The strength to walk when we're weary, the strength to run sometimes without exhaustion, and occasionally the wisdom to allow the Lord to lift us up on the air itself and soar as the eagle flies. Those are the things that God has promised. Note that the 128th Psalm ends with a future hope and promise that you will see your children's children. Now, as Christians, we know that even if that doesn't happen in the here and now, we have an anticipation of eternity. God's blessing is real. It is promised for the future. And even in the midst of the trials of this life, we have reason, good reason, to be thankful as we had for Thanksgiving in a week and a half. We have reason to start giving thanks even now and walk with the Lord. Uh, can you give thanks for something you can't see? Can you give thanks for something you can't understand? Can you give thanks in the midst of the life realities that seem like there is nothing to give thanks for? Can you still turn to the Lord and give thanks for the very things that he has promised? The strength to walk, to run, and sometimes the ability to fly. Can you be thankful for your salvation and the relationship that God has established with you and to which you have responded in love? Well, as we look again at Thanksgiving in a week and a half, I think if we're really going to arrive on that day with true Thanksgiving, we need to start now. That's what I said. Get a running jump on it. Anticipate it. Walk to meet it. Though, like when you're driving across the state of Kansas, if you've ever driven across the state of Kansas, uh, first time we were headed out to see some friends that lived in uh, Colorado in the Rockies uh, at about 8,000 feet, uh, we were told by people, oh my gosh, you're driving, I can't believe you're driving, you got to go through Kansas, oh, Kansas is this, Kansas, Terra. oh my gosh, Kansas, you know. I loved Kansas, it was fascinating, it really was. And, uh, but anyway, as you're going through the western part of Kansas, uh, you, you know, you're looking ahead and you see the clouds in the sky and all of a sudden you realize those clouds haven't changed in a couple hours and it suddenly dawns on you that what you're looking at is the mountains. And you suddenly realize you're looking at the mountains and you think, oh, we're, all, you know, we're almost to the Rockies. And you know, several hours later, you're still driving along and you realize, oh, we're getting toward the Rockies, you know. And several hours later, you uh, you begin to get into the foothills a little bit. It's it's like when you first see them and you feel, oh, we're almost there. And then you realize it's a long journey yet before you arrive at the mountains. But you know, you're given a goal. You're given a vision. You're given a promise by what you can see. And you're given that blessing in your sight and in your mind. And I think that's one of the things that 
is really critical in as you put these two passages together. We're given a vision. We're given a vision of what is. We're not there yet, but a vision that is founded in faith in what God has promised he would do, and therefore we believe that he will do. And as we make that journey, the good news is we never are walking alone. The only one who ever walked alone toward his journey's end was Jesus. And because he did, we don't have to. And uh, I can't think of uh, anything that has the great greater reason to cause joy in our hearts than that, and for which we give thanks. And so it is that... Uh, Sunday after Sunday, we come to the table. We come to the meal that God has prepared for us. And while on Thanksgiving we have turkey and dressing and mashed potatoes and squash and green bean casserole and at least two different kinds of pie and cranberry sauce and, uh, you know, whatever else you like to put with that meal and it seems pretty dramatic the meal that God prepared for us for which we have the reason to give the greatest amount of thanks is this simple meal of bread and wine because of what it is and what it symbolizes in my life and in your life the body and blood of Christ who was the only one in all of human history, who had ultimately to walk alone for a while. You know, when Jesus was on the cross and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was the moment in which Jesus received the sin of the world all on himself. And for that moment was alienated from the, the wholeness and the perfection and the righteousness of God. And he did that for us so that we would not have to do it. So that we could say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and it is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join your, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now if you would take your bread with me, remember, Jesus said, This is my body which is given for you. Take your cup and remember that Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Now I would invite you to receive the elements of communion. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Will you pray with me? Lord, we have come to your table at your invitation. We have received these blessings, blessings beyond words, blessings beyond our understanding from you. Indeed, in the midst of trials and tribulations, your blessings abound. And so we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, if you have a hymnal with you, it is going to be hymn 733, Marching to Zion. So you started with a uh, Jesus Walk This Lonesome Valley, and then we moved into uh, another marching song, and we're going to end with a marching song. This is a walk, and it's a long walk, and it is a walk that is worth the journey. <clears throat> and for those of you who may not be watching but listening simply, I was just putting my finger picks on. <laughs>
knowledge that God is and will be blessing you. Remember that that blessing is his to define and not your own. Find the joy and the peace that comes from knowing that you are walking with him. May the blessing of God be upon our offerings as we give them, offerings of self, offering of finances, and grace us with his presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was, uh, that didn't work out so well, but anyway. Is that the benediction? Was, no. Yeah, that was a, a postlude. That was, that was a postlude, but it was pretty ludicrous. Anyway. Blessings on you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>